rolling right, looking to throw again, going deep, it is caught, touchdown Texas, here's Sam to the goal line, touchdown Texas, Sam Ellinger, his third touchdown of the night. Longhorn Nation, we're back. You grew up in Austin, lifelong Longhorns fan. Mm -hmm. This must be surreal for you to be playing at this school and wearing those colors. That's incredible. Um, you know, grew up 20 minutes away from here, so every Saturday it was, that's what our family was doing. We were, we were going to the games or we were having people over to watch the game. And so to be able to be a part of such a rich tradition and history that I know so well because of growing yeah. up around it, it's really cool. What's your first memory when you think of Texas Longhorns football? Um, staying up past my bedtime <laughs> and watching Vince running the end zone in the Rose Bowl. The national championship on the line right here. He's going for the corner. He's got it! Texas, the national champions of college football. What made you say, I'm going there, I'm bringing it back? Was it? I mean, was that part of your decision to go there and play? Absolutely, absolutely. Because when you went there, it wasn't, it wasn't that way. No, no, and our, our first season certainly wasn't that way either. Um, it, you know, it's hard. You have all these big programs, you know, the USC's, the Ohio State's, the Texas's. And it's hard for those programs to stay down for a long time. Sure. And so I knew it was it was a matter of time before Texas football was going to be was going to be really good again, and I wanted to be a part of that team and be a part of that program because it was so special. For me. Do you think much about about the Heisman Trophy? Is that something? Obviously, you want to win it, but do you think much about it? I don't. I don't. I try not to think about the individual stuff like you were saying, because ultimately, if we don't win, then we know that none of those individual awards come. So I mean, you have to win to be in consideration for those type of things. This is what it's about. I mean, we're talking no about individual no stuff. Yeah. This is why. This is what you guys. Are absolutely, for. absolutely. And I mean, it's a, it's a standard of the University of Texas, and this this place um, involves all sports, and I think that should be the standard for every sport in Texas. Ellinger, the rollout, in zone, and brought in. Looking over the middle, he's got a man wide open in the end zone on the money to Eagles. One and zero to start the 2019 campaign. How would you describe? Texas's offense in 2019? Explosive. Um, freak athletes that have experience. Very versatile in, in whatever we're doing with. Um, if, you, if you want to try to stop the run, we'll throw it by you. If you want to bail out, we'll run it underneath. If you want to have guys that are kind of in the middle, so it's a, it's a decision, we'll hit the RPO game. I mean, whatever you try to do to stop us, we have answers because of the versatility. I mean, up front, um, athletic, athletic offensive line. Um, guys that can really move, run, pull. Um, whatever you ask him to do. So there's there's um, a lot of explosiveness and potential for, for our offense. When I say LSU coming to Austin, talk about the magnitude in your mind for you personally of being able to play for the Burnt Orange against a team like LSU here at your stadium. Yeah, it's unreal. Um, the, the pride that the University of Texas takes and, and the pride that our team takes at playing at home. Um, and then. You add LSU in the mix, obviously, um, top 10 team, incredible program, incredible players. And we just take a lot of pride in the fact that, that we're representing the university in such a big moment and such a big game. Um, so it, it's going to be a great game. Are you comfortable talking about your dad? Yeah. About yeah, yeah. Everybody's heart kind of goes out for you and your family. Mm -hmm. When you go back to when you heard about what had happened, I can't even imagine what the, that news, what it was like for you? Yeah, so with the, the night or the, the day that it happened, we had a basketball tournament that day, and then I was at home, a family friend had dropped me off. I thought that they were supposed to come home on Monday or Tuesday, and it was Sunday night, and I got a text message from another family friend that said, is everything okay? Saw on the news, ESPN, 46-year-old um, man from Austin. So I was like, yeah, I think everything's good. I hadn't heard anything. And so then I started thinking, you know, I was doing my homework, and I was like, hold on, this is... This doesn't seem right. So I started panicking, calling my mom, calling my dad, um, no answer. And so then I started getting real sketched out. And so I went downstairs um, to get the phone book to call one of the people or a couple people that were with uh, my mom in on the trip. And so I was flipping through trying to find numbers and then that's when my mom had walked in. And so then I immediately knew. I was trying to find ways to get the answer and then when, when my mom walked in, that's, that's when I knew. And then we were all downstairs in the living room, um, you know, just sitting around each other in disbelief. And so I, and then I had a moment and I was sitting next to my brother and he was 
obviously upset and so then that's that's when I really made the decision I mean am I going to sit here with my with my face in my hands or am I going to make sure that we're going to move forward and and I can take care of my family and make sure that they're okay so from that moment I it was 30 minutes to an hour after I had heard the news it was my my life kind of transformed into focusing on myself and and um, relying on my parents to taking control of my life myself and making sure my family was in was in a good position. What's it been like to live that way from that point on? You know, not just in your house, but just living out here in this world as people cheering for you on the football field and in your personal life. What's that been like? It sounds like you almost closed one chapter and kind of opened up a new one. Absolutely. I think um, because I had to mature so quickly, I've always been... Um, the type that was more mature for my age. I was always hold, hanging out with older, older people, older dudes. Um, but it, it, um, I had to sacrifice a lot. You know, I couldn't live the normal life of a, of a high schooler. I couldn't do necessarily the things that normal kids could do. Um, and on top of, on top of taking care of my family, I wanted to be really good at football. And so, um, made a lot of sacrifices in that sense. Um, just really focused on family and and what I could do to move ourselves forward um, to be to be happy and so that that, that looked like a different life for a, for a 15 year old 16 year old for your team after what you accomplished last year what what are realistic goals for this team in 2019 I see I see our goals as more internal than the external um, in the win column because ultimately if we take care of what we need to internally then we have the talent and the coaching and the experience to, to go out and win games. But my goal would to be um, really lead our guys and understand that, that and have our team in a position where our heads are so clear on the, on the goal and, the, and our focus that outside noise doesn't affect us. How do you approach your, your personal goals and individual goals? Uh, in high school, what I did, obviously, with Drew Brees and Nick Foles um, attending Westlake, I had their their career stats in my bathroom. Um, and then I met with Coach Herman at the end of the spring and asked him what, what because I always like to have a landmark or something like that. And so um, I looked at Colt's numbers his junior year and, and um, Tim Tebow's numbers his junior year as well. Why Tim's? Uh, just the same, same football offensive style you know obviously I mean, he put together a heck of a year and led his team to some pretty special things but that was something that that coach Herman had brought up um, I, I knew what Colt did number wise and, and the special things that he did the year and then coach recommended the um, Tebow numbers. Tom Herman has clearly changed the culture probably still in the process as we're speaking of changing the culture Saturday night will help change the culture what is that culture? Uh, attention to detail. Every aspect of your life either feeds the culture or deters against the culture. The culture is implementing in your everyday life and everything that you're doing to be the best, to win championships and then be the best version of yourself. And so as that on top of changing it from a coach-led team to a player-led team. Um, he understands the importance of leadership and how powerful players as leaders are. And so he really wants us to focus internally on being a family and loving each other. And when you put those two things together, really special things happen. We're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, make sure you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.